Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. That's right. Happy Thursday morning. This is Run It Back, your hour-long basketball discussion. My friends on the panel, as always, Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, Chandler P, and Lou Will. And um, guys, we had a, it was a weird night. Uh, Something I don't think I've heard or seen before, Shams. You reported that Isaiah Stewart of the Pistons um, had a little altercation pregame with Drew Eubanks. What happened? Isaiah Stewart was arrested last night, and he was cited for assault of Drew Eubanks, who's released after the arrest and the charge. And the NBA has also launched an official review of the situation, I'm told. They've received security footage of essentially this. Both Isaiah Stewart and Drew Eubanks were walking into the arena by the security area pregame last night in Phoenix ahead of the Pistons' Suns game. And that's when some words were exchanged. Both players came chest to chest. And Isaiah Stewart, from what I'm told, punched Drew Eubanks in the mouth, lip area. Police security then separated both of them. And police had to escort Stewart out of the arena. After that, from what I'm told, local law enforcement, the league involved with both teams and and investigating and looking into the situation. But Isaiah Stewart, he had an incident with LeBron James a couple years ago. And he's been known as a a hard-edged player, a guy that obviously competes really hard on the floor. And he got into it with Drew Eubanks last night. From what I'm told, Drew Eubanks uh, did not retaliate on any punch, but Isaiah Stewart did connect with him uh, in the face, in in the mouth area. And now we're going to see, as the league investigates, and local law enforcement did arrest him, did charge him, and we'll see what comes of that after the citation. But the league is now going to investigate this, and Isaiah Stewart was suspended a couple years ago. We'll see how that plays into his history uh, with this matter. But definitely, this is... By far the most unique situation, a first for me. I'm sure, you know, Lou and Chandler obviously played. (laughs) I don't know if they've seen anything like this ever. I mean, arrested in your uniform? Like, what what is that? Chandler, have you Uh, seen this? Have you heard of this? I haven't. I've never, I've never heard of someone, you know, getting arrested in their uniform before the game. Um, Obviously, these guys have had a thing. They've got into it when they've played before. And the good news for me is, there's got to be a video, right? So I think that will kind of give some clarity because I heard it was a sucker punch, which that, that, that's bad. Uh, you can't just go up on a dude and punch him out of nowhere. If they're chest to chest, they're two grown men that are talking trash and they end up getting in a fight, fine. That happens. I've seen teammates fight before. I, I, saw, I, told, I saw Garrett Temple and Omri Caspi literally getting a fist fight and the like. I, that, that's, that's somewhat normal. But for this before a game to overspill from the last time these two guys played, um, was there any talks before? Did they see each other in the summer? Like, is this like an ongoing beef that like, all right, when I see this dude, clearly it's on, but I've never seen it. There's obviously, there's no room for it. Isaiah Stewart, he, he's got, he's had the issues before. Um, I look for a big suspension from him. But no, to the fact that he's getting arrested, uh, that that, that kind of means it's pretty serious. But I, I got to see the video before I really kind of give my input on the whole situation. Lou, what'd you think? Yeah, I, I, listen, I'll keep it real. I, I don't need the video. At this point, we got to start looking into reputation. You know, this is the same person that tried to chase LeBron around the court to get to LeBron. He was in a timeout um, this season putting his hands up, asking somebody on the other team that they want to go to the back and did they want to fight. And now you have this incident. Isaiah Stewart liked to throw hands, man. That's the nature of, the, that's the nature of this conflict. He liked to throw hands. It's unacceptable. Um, there's no place in it for our game, especially in the back. You know, we're coming into these arenas. You're supposed to be protected and safe. You know, obviously, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with grown men, grown men issues are going to arise from time to time. We understand that. But at this point... Uh, I think this is Isaiah Stewart thing. You know, the, as much as we drug Draymond Green in the ground for reputation and things that he was doing on, on the court, this is a guy who's physically tried to harm people over and over. And I, I, and I hate to, you know, throw dirt on Isaiah Stewart, but everything I'm saying is warranted and it's deserved. It's, it's no place for it in our game, and it's unacceptable. I, uh, that is a first, and I guess we can hold out and see if a video emerges and, and what happens after that. But being arrested, um, 
That, that was a big one. I did not seen that before. Uh, let's get to some actual basketball, shall we? The Clippers and the Warriors had themselves a game. No Kawhi in this one. Clippers down 12, rally back, defeating Golden State. Paul George finished with 24 before fouling out. Norman Powell had 21. 12 of those came in the fourth. And Steph Curry with his 41 points, but he did call the Warriors average after this loss last night. Um, it's out of character for Steph to say anything publicly, Lou. So I, I don't feel like we can get on him for this. He's justified in doing this, right? They're literally average. <laughs> They're 26 <laughs> and 26. You know, they, <laughs> they hadn't shook the tree, you know, left or right, one way or another. They are an average basketball team until they prove different. This is a very fair assessment coming from one of their team leaders, their very best player in, in the history of the organization. So when he says this, I think guys have to listen and take it into an account and change the results of what, what the statement that was made. But you'd have to agree with them. They're literally a 26 and 26 team um, coming off of a loss last night. They've been competing better uh, recently. Give them credit for that. But that's only gotten them to an average place. They just got to play better basketball. So this is fair. Yeah, they had gotten to a better place. Chandler, I know you had your sick day um, on Monday, you know, the one you had planned for two weeks. Do you <laughs> think, <laughs> did you see enough in that little tear that Golden State, I mean, granted, last night's loss notwithstanding, but is there something there? Is there enough in the tank that you could give them the benefit of the doubt that they have something for a push as we get closer to the end of this season? Or is this just the average team that they're going to be? No, I think Steph hit it on the head. They're, you know, they're below average. They're, they're, they're the 10th seed in the Western Conference. That is, to be honest with you, wide open. And, you know, there's some good teams at the top there, but they've shown progress. You know, going 7-2 and two in the last nine games, that's big. And Steph has been unbelievable. And look, there's no reason for these guys to tank. Like, they, they are who they are. They're, they're, when you look at it, the reality is they're four games out of the seventh seed. So they can make a little push here. They can, you know, keep guys healthy, continue to groom these young guys like Podzimski and, and Kaminga while having Clay and Wiggins and Draymond healthy in the lineup. They're going to win games. They have this, the culture, the structure. They have the talent. Steph Curry is still playing at an elite level where they can go on little seven and two runs. And they can, you know, run off eight in a row and be right back in the mix of the Western Conference. But is it likely? It's not. They, they, they don't defend. They don't show it every single night. They're not consistent. And those other guys, the, the Wiggins, the Clays, the Draymond, they haven't shown that they can continue to be productive night in, night out. So to me, it's it's they're kind of stuck right now in the middle because they don't have enough to contend. You know, there, there's no reason to shut guys down yet because they still have this hope that, you know, <laughs> Steph Curry can go on these runs and average 40, average 50 points and carry these guys to a playoff series. But listen, just take it day by day, try and win games. And once you get in that play and once you get in the playoff, it's a whole other a whole other season that these guys are used to. So is, is, is the door closed on them? No, but is, are they a contender? No chance. No chance. Well, the, here's a fun fact. Steph right now is hitting seven or more threes in four straight games. He's the first player to ever do that. Um, it, it's kind of crazy to say that given the backdrop of what the team itself looks like. But is there a more fun player to watch, Lou, than Steph Curry when he's on one of these? Absolutely not. He's just he's unpredictable when he's shooting like this. Incredibly hard to guard, running off of screens, shooting on a dime, shooting in the, in, in, in the, in the front court, in the back court, half court, whatever court you want. Steph Curry is scoring his basketball <laughs> at a high clip, and he's been able to do that over a, you know, a span of over a decade now. You know, he's changed the game. He's changed the way that kids are, are playing the game, their outlook on it, you know, and even, even in the pros, you know, teams are starting to go to a, a style of basketball that's reminiscent of how Steph and the Golden State Warriors have played, but nobody plays better basketball when Steph Curry is rolling and nobody is more entertaining when he's shooting those threes like that. So fun. We're getting those pregame shots again. I love everything about that. Um, Clippers were down double digits in the fourth in this one. As I mentioned, there was no Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George did foul out uh, with three minutes. So considering all of that, Chandler, how impressive is this win on the road for L.A.? 
Yeah, it's super impressive. This is that luxury of the depth that they have, which we we beat over the head. This is a team that can go 10 deep. This is a team where you have a guy, you know, you have a big three or a big four with Russ, and then you have Norman Powell now step up and have 12 points in the fourth quarter. You have guys like Amir Coffey right here. That's a huge three for a young kid that's developing on this experienced team. Uh, Zubox being, being back healthy and kind of dominating the paint for this team is going to be critical. So, they have so many different ways that can hurt you. PG and James carried them all game long. But yeah, when he when Paul fouled out, Norman Powell takes over. Terrence Mann had some big buckets. Uh, you know, Plumley was effective in the, in the in the limited minutes he got. So this team has extreme depth, extreme experience, and they're going to be they're going to be really tough to beat because they have that flexibility to go small, to go big, to to shorten the rotation, to go to you know to go deep. So. This is a mature team that that kind of has it all, and they're, and they're starting to click. Shams, we keep talking about Kawhi not being in this game, a left adductor strain. Um, what's the latest? How long is he expected to be out? Clippers hope that it doesn't cost him too much time. He's expected to travel to Indy for, for, for the All-Star game, for All-Star weekend. It's, un it's uncertain, though, whether he will play. Uh, obviously, last night he did not play. They were without Bones Holland as well, as well as P.J. Tucker, both away from the team sent home, but you look at Kawhi Leonard, to me, he should be in the MVP conversation. I don't know if he should win it, but certainly he should be in the conversation. The Clippers, one of the best teams in the league, arguably the best team in the league since the new year. He's played in 48 of the 53 games. Obviously, has played at an elite level, is an all-star reserve this season, so you're starting, you, you've seen him back on that level of being an all-NBA player, a guy that can lead you to the promised land, potentially, but health, of course, is the biggest thing, and adductor strain is nothing that you want to play with, uh, I, I'm curious if you, if you guys would want him to play in the All-Star game, like mm. as a teammate, or would you just want him to rest up, use this break? The Suns are having Brad Beal use the break uh, to get a procedure on his nose as well as rest gonna, his hamstring. So what would you do if you're the Clippers with Kawhi? I'm going to tell, tell you from experience in working with him, Kawhi Leonard doesn't care about the All-Star game. If he's not healthy, he's not going to play. Simple as that. All right. Yeah. And, and there's no reason for him, given his injury history, too, and the, where the, the state of the Clippers right now, they can make a real push. And that we're talking about a real contender here, and that's with Kawhi Leonard. So an all-star game, Indiana, maybe, sure, maybe go, maybe play five minutes. But I'd rather him just sit out, reward a Sabonis, reward a Fox, and start focusing in for this latter part of the season in the postseason. Yeah, right? Like, what does Kawhi Leonard care about going to Indianapolis and playing five minutes in an All-Star game? He's the Kawhi Leonard. Let somebody else have that. Take the time. That's what I would do. Uh, the other team in Los Angeles, the Lakers, don't look now. Uh, they defeat the Jazz. No LeBron James in this one. They have now won six of their last seven. Four games over 500. That's the first time that's happened since mid-December. Anthony Davis with 37 and 15. It's his third 30-15 game of the season. D'Angelo Russell, career-high 17 assists. Um, yeah. AD without LeBron. Chandler, what kind of statements he making? Uh, this is a this is big. This is a huge game. And you, we had you mentioned Rui Hachimura, who has 36 points on 13 of 19 from the field. So this is a game that they should have won. But it was very impressive because they got a little bit of everything. They had AD dominating with 37 and 15. They had a huge game from Rui. They had Austin Reeves chip in 22. They had D'Angelo Russell, who's now looking like he's having a lot of fun out there. <laughs> and everybody involved, picking his spots on when to score, when to dish. So, again, this is a team where they're in a similar boat as Golden State. They, they kind of struggle. They, they have an older team. There's no reason to, to, to not go all in on this last push. And they're starting to take advantage of it. They're starting to get healthy. And again, am I impressed by this win against Utah? No, but this is a mature win without LeBron James, who's been there everything this year. Guys, they, they know they can go and win games without him. And, and he's made, he's gonna he's old. He's gonna, he's gonna miss some games. He's gonna be banged up. You can't rely on him to be your everything every single night. So it is promising to see that guys like Rui can take over a game. That Anthony Davis is still capable of putting up these 37 and 15 monsters games and Austin Reeves can still do the things he's doing and Spencer did what he looked a little bit more comfortable last night so this was an impressive win for me and it shows that guys can compete even with LeBron James out and they can go and win games but let's talk about Rui Lou because in his last three games he's averaging 24 points and 69 percent shooting as far as his role on this team how does he affect the overall outlook of this Lakers squad 
you just got to be more consistent. You know, he's he's had a great three games and had a career high, but, you know, we're 50 plus games in. You know, you got to bottle that up and, and be more consistent and be that scoring punch that they need and that, and that stretch three or four that they're going to need coming down the stretch of games. And he's been playing well, but this is something that we got to see consistently from him. That's the reason that they brought him over in the trade. And so, is he starting to find his footing? I'm, I hope so. I hope this is something that we can see at a high level all the time from, from Rui, and he gives them that, that power punch they, they're going to need when, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie gets with them and, and they start they start gelling um, and, and you get Gabe Vincent back. That Then you become, then you start to see a different Lakers team where the depth matters and, you know, the role players are doing their jobs and giving them an opportunity to win basketball games. Shams, talk to me. What's the what's the latest on injuries for this Lakers team? What does it look like? Obviously, the most significant injury so far this year has been Gabe Vincent. He's about seven weeks post knee surgery. I'm told he is progressing, doing some light stuff on the court. Uh, ten weeks. They listed him out eight to ten weeks, and ten weeks would be that first week of March, about March sixth. Uh, barring a setback, that is still something Gabe Vincent is hoping for, shooting for. Of course, last time he, he had a little stop and go where he was rehabbing that knee issue, came back on the court after just a few games, had to undergo surgery. And so they're trying to avoid any other long-term damage in that knee. And so he's going to be, you know, progressed over the next few weeks and see if he can make a return in early March. Jared Vanderbilt, the Lakers hope in about a month he's going to be ready to make his return from midfoot sprain. There was fears that he would have to have uh, season-ending surgery uh, at this point, he, he is not, and he's rehabbing that foot. So getting those two guys in the lineup, of course, is, is massive for the Lakers. They need that. Thankfully for them, they got Spencer Dinwiddie as a free agent. So, you know, if Gabe Vincent does miss even more time, you have that. But they want both, to go, both of those guys in their lineup for the stretch run. All right, fair enough. We got to take a look around the league. Here we go. First up, ugh, the Nets got destroyed by Boston last night. This total 136.86. That is 50 points, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Nets' second worst loss of all time. They trailed at one point as many as 56 points, by the way. Uh, guys, have you ever, ever been on the receiving end of a 50 point loss? Uh, I don't oh, yeah. think I, I'm, I was reading this. I was reading this earlier, and I was waiting to say no, and then I was thought you were gonna throw like a fifty point loss in my face. I'm not nope, sure. Nope. I nope. don't want to say. I've got. You know what's crazy? Corey Brewer one time hmm. gave us fifty, and that was like the world was ending. Watching the film of Corey Brewer giving us fifty one points uh, <laughs> was crazy. But now nah, this this is this is when things are going this bad. It's it's Ooh. you're not making shots. You're getting frustrated. You're getting pissed at guys missing you. This is a collective, just miserable night. That I'm not even sure they watch film on this. It's that bad. You just want to flush this thing and move on because this is this this was brutal. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's usually that's been my experience. I've lost by fifty points twice, um, and. And for those reasons, I remember those games very vividly. Once I was with the 76ers, we lost to the, we lost to the Houston Rockets by 50 points in a game that I didn't play in. Um, so it didn't sting as bad, but it still was a big loss. And then, you know, another time we lost to the Dallas Mavericks by 50 when I was with the Clippers. Uh, one night we just we just peed the bed and didn't show up. <laughs> it didn't work out. So usually the games like that, it's not really a lot that you can learn from. It's not a lot that the film is going to show you. You throw it away chalk it up to a bad night and you get ready for the next game. I mean, I get all that, like just forget about it, but they started 13 and 10 and since then have gone eight and 23. Like, what has happened to this net squad? Like internally, externally, what is this? I, I mean, I, they have solid players. They, Mikhail Bridges is a bona fide player, but besides that, it's just kind of like a collection of these role players that, don't really mesh well. I don't really know what their future plan is. They're kind of stuck with the whole Ben Simmons situation. They went through all the drama last year. So I don't know. They're kind of this team that's kind of stuck in the middle because they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of assets that other teams I'm sure would love to have. Guys like Dorian Finney-Smith, guys like Cam Johnson, Cam Thomas. They have talent. They have guys that can shoot the ball, score the ball. I just don't like the, the structure of their team. I don't see, like, the big picture 
uh, of really of what they're doing. And Mikhail Bridges is clearly it's been noted that he's the only untouchable guy, and that's 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 fair. Besides that, I think everyone's on the table this summer. Uh, they're in no shape to compete, even to, in the play-in or playoff. So I don't really see I don't really see their vision. But they the good thing is they do have a lot of pieces where I think they can move around and kind of figure something out this summer. Fifty. Points. All right, let's uh, let's talk about Pascal Siakam for a minute. We haven't really addressed him since the trade. We're going to check in. He had 23 and 7 rebounds in his first game against the Raptors since that trade. He's averaging 21 and 7 rebounds in the 15 games that he's been wearing this new uniform. And the Pacers have gone 7 and 8, uh, but five of them have been without Halliburton. That being said, 15 games in, how does this look, Lou? Looks like he's playing well. He's fitting in well, um, getting his footing. You know, playing playing very well with this team. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what they do coming out of the break. You know, the East is starting to shape up to be Boston, Boston alone. But, you know, with all of this early success that they had with the in-season tournament run and Tyrese Halliburton having his coming out party and, and them being a, the successful team that they were in that first half of the season and then bringing Pascal over, I'm curious to see what they, what, what they do in, in the games to come. But the first 15 games... It has been a sample size of things to come. He looks well, and I'm just curious to see what happens next. And look, you said it. No Tyrese Halliburton for five of those games. He yep. He's there everything, and I think Siakam will be a good fit implemented into this offense. Um, and when you look at the Eastern Conference, you see Boston's dominating, and the one team that's really made that push has been Cleveland. But outside of that, it's, it's wide open for the Pacers to kind of make a run here find their rhythm, get everything together. And they can they can sneak into that three or four seed with everything that's happening in Milwaukee, with Joel Embiid going down in Philly. It's right there for them to make a push here post-All-Star break. So I look for this team to continue to stack wins, uh, you know, in the, the last part of the season. All right, we're taking a quick break right now. When we come back, we will be joined by Rockets guard Aaron Holiday. When Run, Run It Back back returns. Run it up. Run it back, yeah. Run it all, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. Uh, ain't no fatigue, now we never sleep, yeah. We in the gym. Oh, I see they got that in there. Aaron Holiday's had himself a week joining us now on Running Back. Aaron, when I'm not watching the Spurs, I'm watching the Knicks. So I'm watching on Monday night. You know we have to get right into this, all right? Okay. That call at the end of the game where Jalen Brunson gets called for the foul and we were heading to overtime. I'm thinking, oh, this is exciting. Things are happening. Then you hear the whistle. Then there's controversy. Were you fouled? I mean, uh, I don't know. It's, it depends on what the refs call, but he did bump me. Uh, he bumped me in my chest and I turned my body, but you just don't know how the rules are in that situation. But it happens. Did to, you? It, it, Go ahead, sorry. Were, were you shocked? I mean, because first of all, it took forever to figure out what was going on. But were you shocked at thinking, oh, we're heading to overtime? Or did you realize, oh, I have a chance to just seal this thing up and keep it moving? I, so I was focused on making the shot. I didn't really hear the whistle. And then obviously he had his hand up and I knew I had three free throws coming. So I knew I was going to make two of them and probably miss the third. So I was shocked, but I'm just happy we got the W. Did you ever think to decline the free throws and say, no, sir, I'd like to go to overtime and settle this like men? <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> okay, I'll just check. No, it it my mind. Fair enough. Aaron, in that, in that same game, you had, a, you had a monster dunk. You had a monster, monster dunk that went viral, which is great. It was only your sixth dunk, believe it or not. Was this, was you, was this, were you thinking, you know, all the way through this play? What was going through your mind right here? Ah. Uh. That, this play, oh. yes, I was thinking about dunking it the whole time because I had one previous in uh, Atlanta, our game right before this, I believe. So I just. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking about oh, like that. That's got to be your best dunk ever, Aaron. I wouldn't say that. I've had a few in high school that were pretty good. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but you on two now, minutes. Was, was your phone blowing up more after this game because of the dunk or because of the how it ended with the with the Jalen foul? Uh, a little bit of both. It was a good mixture. Um, obviously, the dunk. Every my family was very excited about it, and social media was I can't as well. Hear him at all, Lisa. But oh, I, I just, 
I looked at social media, obviously it get, went viral and um, I just had a good game too. So I feel like all that put together really, really just have helped everything go viral. No doubt. So Aaron, this season, 24 and 30 for you guys. You guys have already surpassed last year's win total. So what do you think has been the biggest key to your guys' success already as a young team that's, that's growing, ha have some veteran players, including guys like you? I feel like the organization did a great job of just putting a lot of group, a lot of vets together with this young team. Um, we brought in probably four or five good vets uh, that could help us win and understand the game and help the young guys as well. So credit to them there and also bringing in Ime. He's a, a great coach. You saw it in Boston and he really gets his players to play well. He holds them accountable and on defense is he's probably one of the best defensive coaches I've been around. So all that mixed in with the young talent, the veteran talent, and a good coach, I feel like we were able to put something good together. That's what I, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, Ime being a young coach, you guys trying to turn that page and, and being a young team, you said mm -hmm. defensively he's one of, the, one of the better coaches that you've been around, but what has his impact been other than that uh, in you guys' locker room? Man, he's just a great leader. He installs confidence in us. I remember in training camp, he... He came to all of us and pretty much said, no matter what point you are at your career, you can always get better. And that really stuck with me because I'm a guy who works and throughout my career has been up and down, but my work has stayed consistent. And just hearing that just, it just gives you confidence. And he also breeds confidence in us by obviously allowing us to play our games when we're out there on the court, but just holding us accountable, that, that goes a long way in growing as a team and as, a, as an individual player. You guys added Dylan Brooks in the off season. It's just mm -hmm. a joy to watch him uh, instigate people. So what's it like yeah. to play with him versus playing against him? Um, I've never had problems playing against him. <laughs> I played him in, at Oregon as well. So he's always been a good dude to me, but you really see how good of a guy he is off the court uh, when you're around him in the locker room. He's, he's funny. He has a little Canadian accent. So like it amplifies everything. Everything's funny uh, that he says, but He's just a good dude and a great leader for our team. Uh, he brings that edge that we need. And especially for me and the young guys, like we need to see somebody out there going hard so we can follow up with that and, and go hard as well. Has there been a moment or, or something specific that you've seen him do where you just realize like, oh, I'm, I'm glad he's my teammate? I mean, just the way he plays every game, he's out there playing hard for his teammates. Um, he obviously defensive effort. He picks up whoever the best player is full court and doesn't care. If he gets cross scored on, he's going to give you that effort. And, and that goes a long way for me because I'm a, a guy who likes to play defense and, and go hard as well. So credit to him. He got us, our defense started off and it's going to a good start. Aaron, there, there's also your, your current team, uh, teammate Boban. Uh, and, and when he was on the Mavericks, he kind of yeah. wanted to fight you at the end of this game here. What? <laughs> have, have you guys talked about, <laughs> about this? What? and? <laughs> yeah, we spoke about it before. Um, we all we laughed it off, honestly. But yeah, I remember that uh, against Dallas in the playoffs. I think they just beat us for the series. But I mean, uh, there's no bad blood there. We're all we're pretty good teammates. He's a great guy, and I'm I'm a great guy as well. So we <laughs> we talked about it. And we Aaron, what did you what did you do, bro? What did because you do to I know Boban. Boban. <laughs> I know Boban. He's the least confrontational person I've mm -hmm. ever shared the locker room with. What did you do, man? What'd you say? <laughs> Didn't say anything. Um, I I don't know. I was just trying to play basketball to the end of the buzzard and they threw it to him and I stole it and shot a three and made it. And I think that's what ticked him off because I, I stole it from him and shot it. But I, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I've never I seen never Bobon get mad. I, yeah, yeah, I never got to play with him, but all the, you know, the shit you see, the commercials, he's got to be the funniest cat on the team, right? Man, he's hilarious. He's a great dude. Like you, it's crazy going to city to city and everybody's yelling Boban like during the games. Like they want to see him out there, even off the court. You see him talking to everybody. He treats everybody like family, and he's just a great person to be around. But the dancing, we can we can tell him to stop dancing, right? I mean, it's the TikTok <laughs> stuff is weird. <laughs> it's like just I mean, a it's giant. An <laughs> yeah, he's so good. Yeah, he's the he's only good. player I know in the league that gets a chant no matter what building he's in. And that's that says something. That's yeah. <laughs> so good. Bobon's right. a rock star. 
He's a rock star. He really is. Uh, you've got two other brothers playing the league, which, first of all, is amazing. So to play against your brothers, is there trash talk? What, what is it like pregame, postgame? How do you guys handle that? Uh, there's no trash talking. We uh, we just hang out, honestly. Like, I'll try to get to their house when I'm in their city or they'll come to mine when they're in mine. And it's just a time for us to be around because we don't get to see each other that much. So I really take that time to just hang out and be a brother, honestly. So pregame, I watch them work out. They watch me work out. We'll chat then. And then after the game, we'll pretty much do the same thing. But playing against them, it's a blessing, obviously, um, that my other brother's in the NBA with me. But those are probably like my best and most fun games that I play in. So awesome. Um one-on-one -on -one tournaments, holiday times. Do you guys have those? And if so, who wins? I mean, we've played a few times, especially when I've gotten older and gotten to the league. But it's honestly who gets hot that day because obviously we all could play defense and we could score the ball. <laughs> all three of us can. So it's it's really whoever gets hot that day and they'll usually take the uh, W for the day. You play with uh, Justin two separate stops in your career. Um mm -hmm. Spending so much time together growing up, is it better to play with your brother or without? <laughs> it's better to play with my brother. He's <laughs> by far my best teammate I've ever had. Um, not just like off the court, you get to hang out and spend time with your family, but on the court, I know every move he wants to do, where he wants to go, and I'm the point guard. He knows where I'm going. I know where he'd be at, so even on defense as well, so... It, it obviously works out for us both. And I just got it. I, I got to play with Drew one year. Hopefully we can make that happen, but we'll see. <laughs> your parents also both play basketball. I know your sister, Lauren, played basketball as well. I mean, was, was not playing basketball even an option for you? I know you guys had a lot of backyard moments growing up, but like, what was <laughs> that like growing up and, and just the push to, to, to who? Just competitive. Uh, there was no push really. My dad, he didn't really force me to play basketball. He said, if you want to, I'm here. If I go to the gym and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to, he'd pretty much just say, we can go home right now. He's not going to force it. But we played every sport, like baseball, basketball, football, hockey sometimes, soccer. And we'll compete at everything, like card games. Like, you can name it. We'll, we'll be competing. And that obviously helped me grow into the person I am today, always competitive and have that edge. I'm just picturing a garage full of sporting equipment. So much equipment. Uh, we always like to ask everybody, you're welcome to the NBA moment. Do you remember yours? Um, I probably have a few, but I know I played against Alec Burke. Hmm. I forgot what team he was on, but he came in. He was already hot. I came in the game, had to guard him, and he ran off like – three or four straight buckets. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, this is what the NBA is like and just got to get better and get used to it. It's awesome. Aaron, we appreciate the time. Thanks for playing along at the beginning, even though yeah, I wish the Knicks had won that one. Aaron, <laughs> keep going. We'll, Thanks, we'll, man, we'll talk to you soon. That. Best of luck the rest of the way. When we come back, we're going to ask Lou about his favorite topic of all time, the 2020 back. bubble, run it up, when Run It Back run returns. It back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up. There's a whole bunch who, who won't do it. The Eagles are not going to allow it. And uh, that's why, you know, you don't get sometimes the, uh, the greatest dunkers in the, in the game in the dunk contest. Because they're just like, I, I ain't trying to come in second or third or fourth. And, uh, you know, because it, it's about the brand right now. They, they don't want to do anything to diminish the brand. Diminishing the brand. Dr. J says that's why we're not seeing the stars, Chandler. You agree? I agree, but I, I think that's wrong. Like, I don't think I don't think Jalen Brown not winning the dunk contests. I don't mm. I don't think that diminishes his brand. I still think people are going to respect him, you know, as an All NBA All Star type of player. I think it's more kids' egos these days for sure, and I think it's guys just not wanting to do it. I think they think the the, the dunk contest has lost its luster. It's kind of a lame thing. Nobody watches anymore. But what they don't realize is when you do get a Jalen Brown, when you do get an Anthony Edwards, that will create that buzz and that excitement around it. So I don't think it diminishes their brand. Like, I don't think it's a bad look if Jalen Brown doesn't 
win the dunk contest. I think it's just a great look that he's simply in it and it's gonna and that's who we want to see in it. We want to see good players in the dunk contest. We want to see good players in the three-point contest. We want to see the best of the best compete, not in a basketball game. So I agree with what he's saying, but I think if that if that is the case, the whole outlook is wrong. Because I don't think it's a, a a bad look for them not to I think it's great for the league yeah. and great for the actual brand to, to do. <laughs> That's what I think. That's what I think he's trying to. That's what I think he was trying to get across, Chandler. Like you know, as fans, we don't care if they lose, but from their perspective, I think a lot of players are just scared to put themselves out there mm. um, to be in a losing position. And I think the more and more you get your superstars back in it, the more and more they don't care. You know, if you got four all stars in a dunk contest, somebody has to win. I don't think you really you don't you don't really care as much. But when you're the only one, or you're the only one even considering it and you're dunking against guys that you don't really know, that becomes a different conversation. And so I, I think I just think that's what Dr. J was trying to get across. But I, I agree with you. It doesn't actually that. diminish your brand to lose. Go ahead. Like if you're Jalen Brown, are you salty? If you lose to Mac McClung, you probably are gonna lose to him. This is what he does. Like, you right. know what I mean? I, I don't think that's a bad look at all. Well, neither, but I do there's something to the fact that if it's three other dudes we've never heard of versus three other stars, I guess that's a different kind of losing. Um, Lou, this one's for you. Anthony Davis says the Lakers would have won the 2020 championship even if there was no bubble. What do you think? I would disagree. Um, I think I think <laughs> I think pre bubble the Clippers were playing the best basketball in the league and and we're gearing up for it. Um, we've talked about this 101 times. I'm not going to keep going over this and over this. <laughs> AD is entitled to his opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion. They did win the championship, so it doesn't really matter what I think. They did get it done, but I disagree. Disagree. <laughs> Very politely said. I like that. Chandler, Kevin Durant said Steph Curry is the best ever at his position and top five player all time. Do you agree? I agree with the best in his position for sure. I think he's the best point guard. I think he's changed the game. I think, you know, respect to guys like Magic Johnson and, you know, Jay Kidd and Steve Nash and these other guys. But I think Steph is in another bracket. I think he he's completely the way he shoots the ball, the way he's won championships, the the whole dynasty that he's assembled in Golden State. Yes, he's he's the best point guard of all time. Top five. Now you, you can you can get a little dicey here because you can go with the Kareem's, the Wilts, the the old school players with crazy resumes. Is he in my top five? No. What about your top five? I want to hear your yeah. top five. See, because my Kareem top and all five. those guys are are before our time, Chandler. So they're when, not I, in when my, I do my see, top like, five, those, I respect those guys, but they're not in my top five. Like I, they're they're just not. I I I. I I'm a Le I'm a LeBron, MJ, Shaq, Steph Curry, and then you can even again now are we talking players? Are we talking town? Are we talking Kobe? Are we talking Tim Duncan? Are we talking so I'm I'm a new age guy. I respect the Larry Birds. I respect the Magic Johnsons. I just think if you put those guys in today's situation, I think they could. They're obviously going to be very good, but I, I think Steph Curry. I think he's different. I think he's. I think he's. There's no one ever. Like Steph Curry, then, then, it's simple and plain. No, if he's if he's in if my we're top, consider him the best top. point guard ever, and we build a team from one to five, he's going to be the starting point guard. Yeah, like if you give me a team with with Steph, Kobe, MJ, LeBron, and Shaq, I don't think they're losing ever. And I think that's the five. I think that's a fair five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like who's beating that five? No, no, nobody. God, I wish we could find out. It would be so fun to watch that. Um, all right, Lou. Ben Simmons thinks he would be more useful starting than coming off the bench. Oh, God. Do you agree? <laughs> I mean, uh, all right. The like, will. Come on, hey. man. Like, Ben, I just want him to be healthy and play great, whatever position he in. Now, as far as him feeling like he would be more useful – in a starting lineup than on the bench. I mean, you you were a starter 95% of the time that we've known you to exist as a basketball player and mm -hmm. um, you couldn't get healthy and things kind of went haywire and now you're you're getting back into a groove. You know, take things slow, man. Get, get, your, get your footing back under you and start rolling. And, and then you start demanding more minutes and then you start demanding to be in a, 
a more successful position or a more useful position, as you put it. Right now, I think this is appropriate for you. You know, allow allow your body to 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 get to the place that it needs to get for you to be the guy that you once were, if that is a goal of yours to get back to that level. So, you know, I don't know. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants more for themselves in their career. I understand that, but you know, let's let's take it nice and slow here, Ben. I like that. Yeah, that's it, good it, advice. <laughs> To me, it's like like who cares? Like this is this is this is just ego. This is this is his this is maturity. This is play well at the end of the games, play well consistently during the games, and then you'll probably find your way in the starting lineup. So this to me just shows that his priorities are still kind of out of whack if this is what he's concerned about. Like at the end of the day, who cares, man? You're on a struggling team. Help any way you can and you'll find your way in that starting lineup. I almost feel like Ben Simmons would be better to just say, I don't want to answer any more questions and then just leave Shut it. Shut down like media for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, just like, season. I got nothing. Nothing for you. Uh, Chandler, Kyle Kuzma said he chose to stay with the Wizards over being traded to the Mavericks because he wanted to stay and build something in Washington. Your reaction? I'm not buying that. I'm not buying <laughs> that. Uh, no, I'm not, I can't buy it because the Wizards, the, they're... <laughs> They're not building anything over there. They're one of the most awful, like the, their team is in complete <laughs> shambles. You know, outside Detroit, we're looking at uh, the, the Wizards are really struggling. They have they have no real pieces besides Kuzma, Jordan Poole now with that contract. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I, I think Dallas is, is, is actually building something. And Dallas, if that was an actual offer and a possibility, Man, I would have I would have jumped on that because that's where a chance where he gets to play with an absolute star and Luca and Kyrie and have a chance to win, and then yep. it, there, there's no chance to win here. There's there's nothing that that's getting foreclosed on. There's there's nothing there's nothing being built in, in DC. So I I don't agree with this. If this was the case, then I think this is a mistake because I think he'd be very good in Dallas. I think he'd be very good in Sacramento. Uh, Washington's tough. Washington's tough. All right, Lou, Anthony Edwards said that Rudy Gobert cussed out the team at halftime in their game against the Clippers. Do you remember a player ever giving an emphatic speech that was motivating? Um, I've played with some, I've played with some really good leaders. Um, Andre Iguodala, um, gave a speech once when we were with, when we were on the Sixers. Um, and we were teammates at that time that really stuck with me. He had some some really poignant things to say that stuck with me throughout the course of my career. I've played with Pat Bev over a course of five to six years, so I've heard my fair share of things at halftime coming from Pat Bev. Um, I was thrust into a position of, of leadership at the end of my career for the last six or seven years of my career, so I was nine times out of ten probably the person to say something at a lot of these halftimes, but... You know, this is this is great for Rudy Gobert. I, I didn't know he had this in his personality, so it's great for Anthony Edwards to shine that light on him and and give him, you know, the the, the kudos that he needs to take to hold his team accountable. And so this is this is cool. But you know, I've had my fair share. I, I'm curious to see how that how that went. I might have to call in and, and and get the inside scoop on that. Yeah, to me, to me, this is awesome. This is part of the reason yeah. why he was brought there. He's that defensive anchor. He's the he could be the leader of this team and as talented as they are and have as good of a season they are. I love that. He's not, you know, accepting this let up and they're the number one team in the West, whether you like it or not, they've proven that over and over again this year. So uh, me personally, I've had some teammates like I've Zebo used to really get on us. Even Mike Conley is a soft spoken guy. He would, he would, you know, pull us at a timeout at halftime uh, and, and leaders like that, they do it before the coach does it. They do it before the mm -hmm. coach comes in. They do it before the media comes in. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not for show. It's not for click. So uh, th this is respect for Gobert because this should be part of his DNA, part of his role with this team. Like hey, Chandler, what about, the, what about the guys that, that wait until coach comes in to start yelling? What uh, about those guys? The old teacher's pets. There's a lot of those, those cats. You got a, you got a 15 minute halftime. We're sitting there for five minutes in silence. As soon as the coach walks in, you're going crazy. I know Who two names. Right? I know Name two one. names right now that I want to say so bad that I that I can't. But there's just two guys. What do they rhyme I... with? Come on, we out the game now, Chandler. Let it fly. 
I'm not gonna, they're not just gonna catch <laughs> random strays on a Thursday, but I do hate that, Lou. That was my biggest pet peeve. The coach just That's my biggest pet ball. peeve too, bro. I hated it. False, you text us? The false hustle, guys. The false hustle. It's shut up. Like you're just doing this to, to get yeah, on the Everybody team. hates that person unless and you are so that obvious. person. <laughs> it's so obvious what you're doing. Buzz off. All right. Well, text the thread because now I need to know. Uh, Hornets coach Steve Clifford acknowledged he has failed miserably because his players do not care about defense all the time. Um, wow. Are you surprised he'd admit something like that, Chandler? Cliff, Cliff has <laughs> kept it real the entire season. He straight up said, this isn't an effort problem. This is a talent problem a couple of weeks <laughs> ago. So he, he's, I don't know if he's trying to get fired, if he's trying to lose this locker room because he's telling the truth. This is, everyone thinks it, everyone knows it. Everyone knows Charlotte's simply just, they're not talented enough to win games and compete in the NBA right now. And, but usually coaches don't say that, uh, <laughs> Same thing here. I mean, if, if the coach can't get these kids to buy into to the techniques and to the culture and to what the, he's trying to get to, you fail. And, and, and that's not saying that's an easy job, especially with this collection of players. But I respect Clifford for saying this, but this this isn't going to age well. He, he's you got to imagine he's out of there after two of these comments like this. And it feels like he wants to be out of there. So it's a win win. Yeah. Get paid not to coach. I love it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll wrap things up run on back. Run It Back. Run It Back. Run It Up. 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 Run It Get in on all the NBA buzzer beater, ankles breakers, and tomahawk jams with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. The app is easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. Download the app, make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA. A. Okay, around the league we go. Uh, so Steph Curry had the 25 points and 10 assists in his first game against Utah. That was earlier in the season. He's averaging over 32 and a half right now since Draymond returned to the lineup. What will his point total tonight look like? <clears throat> Chandler? Guess. Uh, I think he's going to give us 36 tonight. Okay. I like that. I like that. What's that? Seven three. So that's seven fourteen twenty one. You figure six free throws. That's twenty seven. Yeah, Four like layups. When you put that's it that 30, way, give me thirty five. Like Fifty. Wow, you went okay. You went right there to thirty five. <laughs> really? You no know one's going like big, like fifty. Like he's just gonna need it. That's it. Yeah. He, uh, he that's could. Unicorn stuff. We can keep it 50. regular. I'm Utah putting for played 50. last night. They're a little yeah. tired. Maybe. 50. 50 for you me. You know what I'm just realizing, uh, Michelle? This is not our Friday anymore. We can't say no. that because we are because <laughs> we We're are back, back tomorrow. tomorrow. We have a Friday show with Tim Hardaway Sr. Manana. So don't act like you don't know about it in the morning, Chandler. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.